I'm back. So I'm gonna try and make it a little closer this time. So maybe people can see the inking process better. I'm not sure if this will be better or not. I'm gonna try it. My butt is so cold sitting on this metal stool. I could get a warmer seat and then I wouldn't feel like a fool. Yeah, I said it. I'm not afraid. I don't regret it. I'm trying to adjust my phone. So now I'm gonna ink some clouds. While uh, I ate lunch, I inked this stuff down here and I put a border on it. Put a bird on it, and now I'm going to ink some clouds and some lightning. And hopefully uh, ramble and not say anything too offensive so that when I upload this to my YouTube channel, I won't ruin any small children's lives if they hear wordy dirds. I do have a YouTube channel. I have not added much to it in a while because I've been doing other stuff and trying not to go crazy and stay motivated like everybody else. But I do want to try and post process videos and things more often if for no other reason just to let me feel like I'm engaging with people and not sitting around alone in my office. Now that I'm doing a slight I think I like the idea of just drawing one side of it. So it's not all outlined. I may white out that because I don't think I like that at all. These are little things that only matter to me. Yeah, I think I like that better. I gotta hold my hand so light here so the line is lighter. I gotta be gentle. Gentle, Chad. Hold it like an egg. You don't want to break. Okay, so there's some lightning coming down. Uh, if you want, when you're drawing things, you can make sound effects. Crack-a-boom! Crack-a-boom! Uh, maybe it'll get you in the mood and make you draw better. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Listen, I don't know. I'm just doing my best over here. Crack a shack a boom! Uh, that was probably the worst uh, novelty rap album of the 90s by Shaquille O'Neal called Shack Rack a Boom. It was not very good. So, I guess I'll start, hmm, I'm right-handed, so they usually say, like, start, you know, you work left to right. Sometimes I don't do that very well, I'll just kind of draw, make a mess, and then I get mad at myself later for making a mess. So, let me see here, I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to draw the opposite of a Bob Ross cloud. These are not happy little clouds. These are angry, vengeful clouds full of sound and fury. And uh, sometimes when I've got big areas to fill in or black, I'll just leave the area like that. Come back to it. I 
can paper around different ways so I can make lines the way I want with my hand, with my hand motion. It's really cold. I hope you're staying warm where you are. I went ahead and cranked up the heat because I was miserable and so cold that I basically didn't want to do anything but hide in my bed with my dog. I can't do that. I got work to do. When you're self-employed, you gotta keep your old nose to the grindstone. You can't run that risk of uh, goofing off. You gotta, you gotta be a tough boss on yourself. I say, listen, mopping. Did you get enough done today to justify laying in your bed with your dog? No, sir. No, I did not. All right, we'll get to it. I'm not paying you to. Lay around and take naps with your doggy. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. And you go back out and you start trying again. This um, is a nice pen. I really like them when I first open them up. They, the ink lasts quite a long time. They draw from probably too long because it kind of tricks you. You don't realize the ink's dying out. And uh, that last one I was using when I started the last video it was getting a little a little tepid with the lines. And uh, it still wasn't terrible. It just wasn't putting out definitive, like the, the lines were getting a little weak, a little gray. And so I, I usually have a can where I have some of the old ones put aside if I need a Pull out more if I'm in the jam, or if I have a big area to fill, I'll kind of use the uh, thick end of the pen and squeeze a little more ink out of it. You hear a hiss. My house is not haunted by ghosts it is uh, my heater and uh, I actually need to open the vent in my office I shut it so that I wasn't wasting heat for the rest of the house it's our house is just my wife and I so we don't have kids rooms or anything like that we got a heat Open that vent so you don't hear any more hissing. There we go. Want Bob Cratchit begging, begging for some heat over here. Mr. Scrooge, may I have some more coal for the heater? I'm done drawing this, I have to scan it on a the worst uh, printer and scanner I've ever had. It's an Epson Workforce that I hate. I think it's a piece of crap. But I keep it because it has an oversized scanner. So I can scan 11 by 17 and there's a couple of things I don't understand about the technological revolution. One, why is Bluetooth no better now than it was 20 years ago? It's been around 20 years. 
in terms of technology, it's ancient. It is no better if I'm on a walk and I have my Bluetooth headphone on, I can be 150 feet from my car and it will automatically switch over and let the Bluetooth device in my car that is not on override the headphones that are on my head that are on that I chose. I, The human being said, I want to listen to this and sync to this and it will just do this. Um, I will walk into my bedroom where I have my bedroom. I'm trying to draw and talk. Oh boy. Walk into my studio. I'll be on my phone with a client. It will try and switch my phone to Bluetooth and connect to my computer. Even though I do not have this on and I do not want it or have not requested it. Bluetooth, why are you not better by now? My other complaint is somehow scanners now are the technology. It's very simple technology. It's just like a big camera. But you really can't get good scanners for artists anymore. Um, in the 90s, Epson made an oversized scanner that was, I don't know, like 150 bucks, a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't that expensive. I never bought one. And I wish I had, because I would probably still use it. And um, it was just real basic. Didn't have anything fancy for scanning your family slides, uh, which, you know, if you're a young person out there, uh, slides were like a thing back in like the 50s and 60s. You could take a photograph, have it developed onto a slide. It was like a miniature picture inside a frame. And you could look at your slides on a projector. My dad was really into this. He was really into photography. He traveled the world before he married my mom and uh, had incredible pictures of his time in Europe and Spain and all over. He was a world traveler. And the pictures on slides look incredible because the color, something about the way it's processed and the, the technology, no, not technology, but the, the science of the photo photography with it um, the color was really saturated, and they just look great, and they hold up really well. Um, and I have a lot of these old pictures I, I converted to digital when he passed. And really, a lot of them look probably as good now as they ever did. They're really something. Um, but, you know, the scanners that, that I used to have that I miss, it was just a big scanner. It's super basic. And now... A oversized scanner is a couple grand. It's really kind of crazy. And it's just nothing. It's just, you know, I just need to scan a drawing at 600 DPI. And uh, they have scanners on everything that are kind of adding things I don't care about or need. Like, I don't need it to be a multifunction all in one that can also order my groceries. Like, I don't, I don't need that. I just need to scan big drawings, little drawings. That, that's what I need. And uh, it's really oddly something that's hard to find. I don't know why it's that big of a deal to have. So the Epson workforce uh, has oversized scanners on it, which is nice. It also has one of the worst printers I've ever used. Uh, it's total garbage. Prints terrible. Um, you clean the head, it prints terrible. I really only use my printer to print out orders on my site, which by the way, orders on my site, all orders over $40 at free shipping. Shameless plug. Um, or I print out something that's referenced for a drawing or something. That's about it. Like I don't print much. And they, even that stuff looks like garbage. So I hate it. It's giant. It's ugly. I hide it in my closet because I don't want to look at it. And if I could just get a big scanner and put it on my desk, I would do that. And uh, I know there's ways you can scan with your phone, but I'm like, I don't think a piece of art, I don't think I trust that to be scanned on my phone when I'm going to this trouble to make the lines look a certain way and draw it a certain way. I don't think I'd, I think I'd rather it not just be 
something I crap out on my phone, if that's okay. So anyway, someone needs to make me a big scanner that I can put in my closet or have on my desk. Please, thank you. Thank you. So as you can see, I'm blocking out the areas where the lightning go. Making some areas really heavy. And then as I get into these areas, I'm going to, I think, make them less solid so that they'll look further away. I think that's what I'm going to do. That's the plan. When I get ready to fill these in, I will grab a different brush. This is a new brush, so I don't want to kind of wear out the head and the ink too fast. It's sort of a little more precious right now. It's in better shape. care of it. Um, recently, over the holidays, speaking of Precious, I rewatched The Lord of the Rings, and that series holds up so good. Yeah. I watched it on HBO Max, and uh, I really enjoy HBO Max. They have a lot of old kung fu, like samurai movies. One of my favorite film series of all time, Hanzo the Razor, is on there, which is batshit crazy. I love it. It's uh, I discovered it a long time ago online, and let me take some white out over those lines there and make those look a little better. Um, it was made in the 70s, Hands of the Razor. It's definitely a reaction to American cinema like Dirty Harry and black exploitation and stuff like that. It's got vibes like that all over. Like the music's real. It's real heavy bass, uh, funk kind of stuff. You can tell it's got that vibe they wanted to emulate. And the title credits have the you know, Tarantino S seventies, big giant bold letters popping up and uh it feels like a movie I have to assume you know, Quentin Tarantino has in his home theater library or something. Cause it's just got all the hallmarks of that, of genre, crime, kung fu stuff. Um the titular character, Hanzo, is a dirty hairy esque doesn't play by the rules cop um, he's but the difference here is it's in feudal Japan so he's not a cop he's you know like a samurai he's like a cop with a sword and uh, Hanzo like a dirty Harry is always bumping up into you know his superiors who just want him to play nice and he's always fighting against corrupt officials and uh, all that. The, the twist here, the part that's really bonkers, is he's called the Razor because of, I'm, try, I'm trying to make this video safe, so if I post on YouTube, I could say it's for kids. He, he has that nickname for a reason that's not related to his blade. And it gets weirder from there. It's, pr it's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty weird freaking movie <laughs> and uh but it's also just like a good kung fu movie like it's just a movie it's not a it's not graphic but <laughs> but but it is weird and if you like weird obscure cinema i recommend checking out hands of the razor it's pretty wild um but they have that on there they have kurosawa on hbo max they have uh, Godzilla stuff like they got a lot of cool they have Turner classic movie collections uh, they have a lot of Warner Brothers stuff they're developing 
Um, they even have some reality shows that HBO is developing. They have a fun reality show called Hot Dog. It's about dog grooming that my wife and I like. Um, a really cool show. I just discovered it started off on Cinemax. And HBO got the rights to it. It's called Warrior. It's a kung fu show. And uh, it's kind of based on some concepts Bruce Lee had. He, Bruce Lee originally wanted to make the show Kung Fu that David Carradine made. And uh, he kind of got gypped on it. Like he was supposed to make it. It was his project. And in, uh, in typical Hollywood fashion, they cast a white dude to pretend to be a Chinese man. And uh, kind of screwed it up. I like Kung Fu, but I'm sure Bruce Lee's version would have been different and, and better, I would have to assume. But anyway, this is about, shows about a guy that comes to America and again has a very Tarantino vibe. They're definitely going for a what if Quentin Tarantino made a Kung Fu movie and it takes place in America post-Civil War in uh, San Francisco specifically. And it's about immigrants and the culture clash of the time and the corruption in the city and gangsters and it's really fun really well done fight scenes and uh it's kind of like appropriately tasteless in the right ways that i like real violent and over the top anyway i like hbo max so far so ink and clouds i'm gonna get this little corner inked um, or defined, and then I'm going to get a brush and another pen and fill it in. That way, you know, it'll be a little more clear how it looks with all the darkness. This is all being done for a promotional piece for Frisco Tattoo Parlor and Rogers. And um, I believe they've decided to make a print of this. I'm talking to them about using Flash Flood Studios in Tulsa. They do really awesome work. And I'm really excited because I really like designing for print and for physical objects. Like, like for me, a project like this isn't done until the physical thing is done and I get a copy in my hand and then it kind of feels done. And it's very satisfying. And I post that online. I go, look what I made everybody. This is cool. I like this. I feel validated. I hope I get a lot of likes. Oh yeah. That's my baby voice I use when I post on social media. Oh. Little Chad hopes he gets validation today on social media. Listen, we gotta take our validation where we can get it, right? Some of those lines aren't so great. But you know what? I'm not a machine, man. I'm making a drawing. I'm not making a... It's not a freaking computer program. It's a human hand with a, with a heart beating blood. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to look interesting. Just keep telling yourself that, Chad. All right, so I think I'm at a point. I can start filling in some junk. I feel fairly confident I penciled enough that I like the look of this, which is why I didn't really do more. A lot of times I'll finish a little more before I go all over and make sure I'm okay with the lighting and all that, but feel comfortable this is probably okay and I don't always use this I mean I actually use this pen to like draw finished lines so I'm kind of using it here just to fill in areas and it's not because I don't like the pen I think it's a really good good pen I like it a lot um 
but it does serve that function too. I can grab it and stick it in here and fill in lines. And and these aren't real expensive pens, so I don't feel too precious about it. They're like really nice markers. So it's okay to use them this way, I think. So I will sometimes go around the edges like this because I'm trying to retain the integrity of the line I laid. Um, not be precious about it, but also I went to the trouble of drawing it, so why not leave it like that? And then what I will do in a minute is I will grab um, a brush and fill in quicker. And also it gives me time with a pen like this, I can fill it in, but sometimes I'll have spots like that where I'll decide, oh, let's not make that totally solid. Or like here, you, know, you can kind of pull that out and it gives the cloud a little depth. So you have this shadow behind the cloud, then you can do this. So it'll give the cloud a little depth, like it's casting a shadow behind itself um, a little bit. It doesn't all have to be just absolutely solid black. And some of that will, will fill in when you print it, not show up, or maybe nothing but like some glorified texture on it, but that looks good too, that's okay. So a certain amount of uh, intuition, I think you have to give yourself permission to follow just to draw it, not get too hung up on overthinking it. Let the universe flow through your hands. Let it talk to you. Let the universe help you create vengeful little storm clouds on your drawing. Maybe that's a career path. Become like a Gen X, Bob Ross, like kind of cynical and moody. I don't know, just draw your drawing, man. Quit selling out all the time. Why don't you try that? Maybe maybe your drawing wouldn't suck. I don't care about your happy little clouds and your trees. That's not my problem. I used to watch Bob Ross when I was a teenager on PBS. Unironically, I was super into him. I thought he was great and he was so relaxing. I didn't always like his his artwork because I wasn't really into doing landscapes, which is funny because I get paid to do them now a lot for t-shirts and things. And I'm about to start doing some things like that for myself and some new lines I'm working on. And, uh, and I enjoy drawing nature stuff a lot more now. But uh, as a teenager, I was just like, I want to draw cool stuff and, you know, I'm going to draw some dudes like kicking butt maybe. Maybe draw someone like picking up a car, throwing it over on top of a building. Um, but I, I did genuinely like Bob Ross's demeanor and I was very lonely by myself, had an unhappy family, really no family. And, uh, he was so damn soothing. Like I would just sit there and get relaxed. And it was like your uncle that you loved. And I would just sit there and get in a fugue state and just really get relaxed watching Mr. Ross paint his, his picture. Oops, I think I cut out for a minute, sorry. My phone is getting low on juice because I have a phone that's a million years old and I'm officially in cranky old man territory where I don't want to buy new phones because I think it's stupid. I think Apple should either make a phone in America and I'll pay a lot of money for it or figure out how to make a phone that doesn't cost $1,500 when you have virtual slaves making them in situ 
in a working condition so bad, you have to have inflatable cushions outside the plant because people want to jump out the windows and kill themselves. So give me one or the other, Apple. But anyway, they're just too damn much money and they are gross about how it, they're made. It's frustrating. All right, so now I'm gonna get a brush and I'm gonna fill in some of these areas. This is a great brush, I like it a lot. I use it for actual finish work. It's another Kurataki. Um, I have some that once they get a little beat up, I save them for this. The, the heads on them last quite a while and you can make really good thick to thin lines and you can just do any kind of general brush work with them, they're real nice. I've just been doing things with a little more detail the last couple of years, so I'm just not using them quite as much. Um, and then when the head gets a little worn down, then I'll turn them into this. Like it's a big, nice, you know, ink filling device. The ink comes out of it in a real nice, nice flow. And uh, sometimes as I'm doing it, I'll decide to leave little openings like I'm doing here. And again, it's just sort of intuition. Like maybe I want the cloud to have a little more depth or you're fighting just not wanting the cloud to feel like a giant black blob that I drew If uh, you're interested in process videos, I don't have much on there yet, but I'm going to start working on it more. You can go to YouTube, and if you just Google Big Bot Design, you should find it. And at some point, I'm going to probably do more process stuff, maybe Get on there with some friends of mine who are artists and have shop talk maybe that might be good i'm very lucky to have so many talented people that i call a friend and uh, i don't get to see them now because the world's a turd hopefully just temporarily and uh so it's an excuse to see those folks too nothing else So as you can see, I'm filling in my blacks. Just the big areas of solid black that are gonna give a lot of drama to the scene. The uh, thick to thin lines give you that feeling of motion and also shading that the you're seeing where the dark parts are meeting the light parts of the cloud. And I think my phone's about to die, so I think I'm going to get a cord. I'll tell you what the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pause this video. Then I'm gonna take the phone out of the case that's holding it above my, uh, my my stand here. It's holding it above my drawing area. Then I'm gonna get a cord. Then I'm gonna plug it in. And then I'm gonna ink the other parts of the clouds. And when all this is done, you're gonna see like this whole drawing just finished. And it's gonna be freaking nuts. That's what's gonna happen.